you know, the laws of the strangers, love thy stranger uh, like he's yourself, um, circumcise your stranger, right? To me, uh, uh, I'm coming to the conclusion that the camps are like really uh, are not in agreement with these particular um, understandings of what this word is, right? Mm-hmm. They can't, and and I can't make this shit up. Um, <clears throat> they tend to not, they ignore a lot of things, they acknowledge things, and I just hear a lot of contradictions with a lot of camps when it comes to this particular topic. So to you, uh, Kataza, I said your name right, right, Kataza? Kataza, that's correct. <clears throat> And, and uh, the ISUPK, um, mm-hmm. what y'all stands with um, the stranger pursuing to that? Let's let's stay at mm-hmm. let's stay at Ezekiel twelve forty five. If you want to stay at that, or or just address it however you want to do, but mainly twelve forty five. I don't I don't mind addressing um, Exodus twelve and forty five. I'll get there with you in a second. But to answer your question in totality. One, there's not only different words for strangers, but two, there's different context. A stranger could be someone of another nation or a stranger could be your brother. And there's also a a stranger that your brother can become because he's alienated himself either from the covenant. He missed the Passover or something along those lines. So it's um it's contextual. I don't know what are the camps you're talking about. For me, there's one camp. That's the ISUPK and that's been our stance forever. So I, I don't, I can't turn around and tell you what they teach, why they teach it or whatever. But what I can do is show you context in the scripture to show you a stranger that's another nation and a stranger that's speaking of an Israelite. So uh, you, you ask for, uh huh. Give me, give me one second, one second before we, before we do that. Let's, let me, let me be more direct. <clears throat> do you, do you have to circumcise your stranger? Do you have to circumcise your slave? If you, you, we was back in ancient times, you, Kadazai, you, you buy a servant, you know, um, Leviticus 25, 44, I'd say that you could buy from the heathens, right? We both agree that that's the heathens. Then it says the stranger, those are who you buy from. It reiterates itself. Do you if, circumcise this particular person? If anybody, if it's in the scriptures that we're supposed to, then you do. You get what I'm saying? And, and this is and this is what I'm trying to explain. Right. Um, let's go back to Abraham. OK. Abraham was the one that the covenant was given to. And this is this is before Israelites were on the earth. But he had to circumcise his servants, did he not? Facts, facts. And the reason being is because, you know, if if me and you were to move to China right now, whose laws would we have to abide by? Chinese. So if someone was to come into our land and they were not from there, whose laws would they have to abide by? Whoever's land that they are. Whoever's in charge. So this is a part of our laws. This is a part of our customs. And if you want to be here, if you want to get money here, then you got to abide by the laws and the customs. Now, here's something else, too. You said slave earlier. Though, um, in the context of what you're talking about, you know what I'm saying? I got a feeling I know where you're going to go. We don't have slaves like that. We have servants in that capacity. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? And there's even Israelites who could be servants, much like today. But y'all don't use that term. Not to cut you off, bro. Uh-huh. Y'all don't use the term slavery. Y'all use servants. It depends, once again, on the context, which is why I'm saying that in context, we even have Israelites who are servants. You know what I'm saying? And if you work for a company today, like let's say you're a tradesman, you know what I'm saying? And and you go and you work for a subcontractor, you're a servant and you're getting paid for X amount of dollars or this amount of wage. You know what I'm saying? And we've done the same thing and we created laws for how we should treat brothers when they work under us or when they're working under us to pay back a debt now um where was i i was before i jumped there so now you wanted to know exodus 12 and 45 correct yeah so now a foreigner and a hired servant shall not eat thereof this is talking about the uh I mean, I guess if we go up, we'd have to we'd have to read about it just so everyone knows the context about the Passover. So Exodus 12 and 43. And the Lord said unto Moses and Aaron, this is the ordinance of the Passover. There shall no stranger eat thereof. 
the Passover is for the children of Israel, correct? Right. But if you can, if you can, mm -hmm. God, if, when we get when we see those words, stranger, mm -hmm. could you tell who is this specifically directed to? You know well, what I'm, I'm saying? I'm 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 trying to, okay. and I'm also, okay. I'm trying I'm trying to do that to also gauge where you're at. So that's okay. why I asked the question. So one, we're in agreement. This is talking about the past. Diligent, bro. I just, I just want to be on the same page with you, bro. And that's, and that's why I'm asking the question, so I know we're on the same page. Because I don't want to say something and then, you know, we veer off later. So we're in agreement right now. We're talking about the Passover, correct? For sure. No stranger shall eat thereof. So now, if this is talking about a stranger, this is talking about somebody who's not allowed in the congregation. And you can be an Israelite and not be allowed to be in the congregation, which would make you a stranger. You could okay. also be another nation and not be allowed to eat, meaning you have to be an Israelite who is invited to the Passover. Certain things could make you a stranger. I'll give you an example. If there's certain birth defects in the Bible that would make you a stranger that you couldn't come through. Um, leprosy. If you had leprosy, could you come around the congregation? Ah, that's a good point. Nah, then you couldn't eat. If you had a flat nose, you couldn't right. come around the congregation. So how could you eat the Passover lamb? Right, right. You understand? That is right. something that would make you a stranger because a stranger isn't about a race. A stranger is talking about a position in society. So depending on the stranger, it depends on your position, which is why your brother, though he be a stranger, meaning you don't know him. He's from another land. You treat him differently than a stranger who's a foreigner, who's who's another nation, who's an alien. You understand? I'm, I'm following you. I'm following you. You know, this, but I'm, I'm, we wait, I'm waiting to get, I'm waiting for you to get to the, to the nitty gritty where it's safe to, uh, to buy the stranger. That's, that's um, the meetup. Well, I mean, I mean, if that's where you want to go, I mean, I don't have a, I don't have a problem with that. But let me just give you an example. Oh no, I'm, I'm listening, brother. I'm definitely listening. I got you. So now, let let me give you an example here, and and this is this is what has to do with even when it says buying each other, that has to do with debt. You know what I'm saying? Like that that has to do. I, I, I'll give you some examples. So this is Leviticus the 25th chapter, and I'm going to start at verse 23. It says the land shall not be sold forever talking about the promised land talking about the land of israel for the land is mine meaning that the land of israel doesn't belong to israelites it belongs to the lord that's why he can evict us or that's why he can keep us there he's uh -huh. our landlord and it says for ye talking about israel are strangers and sojourners with me in this context who are the strangers and sojourners it's definitely um, Israel. Yeah, it's the Israel. entire it's the entire nation of Israel. Right. So so the context of the chapter is going to let you know what it is. So now I'll give you another example. I'm going to keep reading to show you what it comes down to how you buy strangers. Right. And in the land of your possession, ye shall grant a redemption for that land. If you need redemption, it means you messed up. If thy brother be waxen poor and hath sold away some of his possessions, and if any of his kin come to redeem it, then he shall redeem that which his brother sold. Because now, let's say I have land, right? And I'm poor. So what I do is I'm basically leasing you the land. So my land is good. I have a, vine a wine vineyard, but I've fallen into debt. To get out of the debt, I'm going to sell you my land so that you can reap the profits off of it to help me pay back the debt. Meaning I want to pay back the debt. You give me money. A barter, in order, system. A barter yeah. system. So in order to pay you back, you're now reaping the benefits off of the wine or the grapes that come off of my land. You with me? Uh -huh. And now as we continue to read, and if the man have none to redeem it and himself be able to redeem it, then let him count the years of the sale thereof and restore the overplus onto the man whom he sold, that he may return onto his possession, meaning we're not allowed to possess each other. I'm, I'm excuse me, to oppress each other. So at any time, if let's say I go in another business venture and I make the money, we add up what we owe. 
I come break the money off and you have to give me my land back. You can't keep it from me because the Lord is trying to stop us from oppressing each other. So all these different laws that you read about, when an Israelite sells them stuff or when a brother falls in decay or, or for example, let's go to Leviticus 25 and 35. And if thy brother, your brother is an Israelite, be waxen poor. Wax means to grow, meaning he's grown so poor he's in debt and fallen in decay with thee, fell into debt with you. Then thou shalt relieve him. Yea, though he be a stranger or a sojourner in this chapter, who is the strangers and sojourners with the Lord? Okay, and this is the part where it gets where it gets thick, right? This is the part where I gotta, you know, start start pulling the sword out, bro. Okay. Um, now, cause after what, what what verse is this? This is Leviticus twenty five and thirty five. Thirty thirty five, right? So it says mm -hmm. the stranger and the sojourner, right? So I believe that there is a lot of um um contradictions when it comes to this particular term, because on one hand you will see that the stranger could be referred to as the heathen who was bought, which we will see once you go down to 44, Levit Leviticus 25, 44. Mm -hmm. you'll, see, you'll see it mentioned, you could buy from the heathens. And if this stranger sojourns in your land, <clears throat> it, it uses Tosab, I believe, and it uses Gur, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, we know that the heathens who are referred to those who are not within the gates are actually the Nakar, right? So I would assume when we read these particular uh, verses that if this stranger who you are buying from the heathen, I would assume, right, that, and, and we know that the Masoretic text, they are the ones who, you know what I'm saying, interpreted these things. They should have put the term, they should have put the word in the car, but they put a tosab. They put tosab to, to, to make the impression that these people that you just bought have an inheritance with you. Not that, not that they own the land, brother, don't get me wrong. Not that they own the land, but that they are inherited with you, right? So if you say I'm a Judite, I, be, I buy a, um, I buy a, um, a Elamite. He is now inherited within the Judite land, right? Because then we go on to see at the bottom, I, I believe it's 46, it say that an actual, basically my Elamite could help another Israelite who falls into decay. It says no. that that, well, we see that the it says that the stranger could wax rich, right? Once and, we get to 46, that stranger and, that waxes rich is actually the one that is a an actual heathen. And this is this is why you know that it's not a heathen, because first okay. of all, I specifically went to 25 and 35. The context of that chapter started off with your brother. Who's your brother in this context? It's an Israelite. It's an Israelite. So the person who fell in decay that you're helping is an Israelite. And you're going to help him, though he be a stranger. Now you said something else too, and and this is this is what I mean. Like th this, uh, the words are jamming you up because you don't know the full context of the words. You believe that nakar or nakrai is something that's strictly for a heathen, but do you know that David used that word to call himself a stranger and an alien? I I, I do I do I do know so, what you're. So, uh, but, 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 hold, but, on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let, let me let me make this point. Psalm but, sixty nine and eight says, "I am become a stranger unto my brethren." Again, brother, who's David's brothers? Are they not Israelites? Facts, facts. And an alien unto my mother's children. His mother's children. Are they not Israelites? Facts, facts. And now the two words that are used here for one for stranger is zer or zawar, and then the other one was nakar, like you said for alien. So is mm -hmm. David an Israelite or not? No, he's definitely an Israelite. So it's clear that that same word that you used can also be used for an Israelite. And the context of the stranger and sojourner that we're talking about in verse 35 is your brother. Your brother's but, an Israelite, is he not? Yes, but that's why when I initially, when I when I brought up my point, I wanted to go to Exodus 12, um, 
and 45. And it's 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 dope that you went to Leviticus 25 because that's exactly where I was going to start the precept. Maybe that's the spirit just, you know what I'm saying, running the show. But again, that's why I initially went to Exodus 12, 45, because I wanted to see if you could pinpoint what it means to buy a heathen. Because once we go to Exodus, okay, let me rephrase that. In Leviticus 25, 44, it says you can buy a heathen. He can, he can be inherited and passed down to your children. So I would precept this particular verse with Exodus 12, 45, when it gets to the point where it says the, the stranger that you buy and you circumcise, he can eat the Passover. Now that's 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 the dilemma. That's the that's the issue that I'm having. See, this is everybody. this is the dilemma that you're having, right? Mm -hmm. Because as soon as I got to the word stranger and sojourner in verse 35, you automatically went to another nation. How could this stranger and sojourner in 35 be another nation if it says your brother? I'm I'm gonna be uh, straight up with you. The reason why is because the law literally tells us treat the stranger as yourself and you you just earlier brought up abraham how he's supposed to circumcise his strangers the it's, ones that are not he his circumcised family. his servants and i'm not telling you that you should I mean, disrespect another nation but this is what i'm trying to explain to you we're yeah. talking about your actual brother how do we know that because the entire ch the, this entire context of this chapter is if I start in the beginning of 25 and the Lord speak into Moses in Mount Sinai saying, speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, when you come into the land, which I give you, ye shall then shall the land keep a Sabbath unto the Lord. He's now breaking down to Israel what they have to do, how not to oppress each other. And he's saying, you are a stranger and sojourner with me. So there are brothers that you're going to come up with that are going to be strangers. And so like, for example, if I'm an Ephraimite and I go to the land of Judah, I'm sojourning in the land of Judah and I'm a stranger there. You don't oppress me just because I'm foreign from that land, just because I wasn't born in that land. That's the whole point of this. So that's why, you know, the context is different because he's talking about who you can give usury to and who you can't because a stranger that's not your brother you can charge interest a stranger who is your brother you can't and that's why it's so important if you keep reading from 35 into 36 it says thou shalt take thou no usury of him or increase but fear thy god that they brother may live with thee but there is someone you can charge usury to that's somebody who's not your brother who's a stranger, who's another nation. The context lets you know, just like the context earlier said David was a stranger and an alien. Brother, you don't understand context and context is where the Holy Spirit is out. So you talking about the spirit, the spirit's not with you if you can't get this context. But where, but where does it say you could practice rigor on them? Because it just, all it, all it said was not to pra practice rigor on your brother. And then it continues to say, you can buy from the heathen. And then I just, I literally showed you the precept where in Exodus 12, 45, it's literally saying that that stranger that you just bought in Leviticus 25, 45 is the same one that you bought in Exodus 12, 45. Okay. And now he can eat the Passover. And now so this, this, is, get, this is, this I'm is what I'm trying to, to uh -huh. I'm trying to see, am I bugging or where, where particularly what scripture particularly says that you are supposed to circumcise your stranger? You're bugging because you can't even see that in verse 35, that stranger. And so so before I even get down there and explain that you don't understand the rest of the chapter. But I want you to answer that question, too. Though, before, I, I, don't have a, I don't have a problem answering the question for you. Before we get there, because you've been jumping all over the place, I'm trying to get you to understand that what we're reading here is pertaining to the children of Israel. And specifically when it says your brother is talking about an Israelite. So now how can I even trust your opinion on any other scripture when it comes to a stranger? If you can clearly see it says your brother back to back and you're making it a heathen. 
Like you want to love heathen, Zach. Well, that's, I can, that's, I can, what, I that's what that's what you want to do. You get what I'm saying? This, okay, but watch this. Show, I, I see. I see. I see. I see. You don't want me to finish. Go no, ahead. No, 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 no. Go you ahead. What you have, what you have to say is clearly more important. So go ahead. Nah, you paused, brother. So I thought you was giving me a moment I, to speak. I, 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 I don't want to do it like that. I had to do it like that. I had I had to I had to breathe. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, nah, I'm all ears, G. I'm all go, ears. I'm go, ahead, go ahead, finish it. Finish it. Okay, so the 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 wild the coldest thing about Leviticus 25 for me mm -hmm. is when it says you can inherit these people, pass them down to your children. Right. And then it says this same heathen, right? He can, he, he this same heathen can wax rich within the land of Israel. And, and I don't know, I think you said you disagree with that particular point, but this particular heathen can wax rich. And then an Israelite who was, who was in poverty can be bought out of servitude from his uncle, someone in his family. But watch this though, Katazar. Mm -hmm. Let's say uh, a Moabite. No, nah, I'm not going to use Moabite. Let's say. I want to get right back to Leviticus 25, 44. But, 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 but watch this real quick. Watch this. I'm going I'm I'm to make it short, bro. I'm going to make it short. Yeah. Let's say. Let's say, and just so you know, we over the time too, so we got to wrap it up soon. I got you. All right. Let's say an Egyptian man mm -hmm. has a child with a Judite woman. Now that puts this child, who was born from an Egyptian, within the confines of the law, to where his uncle, who was an Israelite, could buy him out of servitude, bro. You, you 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 heard what I said. You you are going so deep to try to give a heathen inheritance <laughs> in the land of Israel that it is retarded. You know and, and 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 this is and this is this is what like if if you could get this last piece, bro, like like this will help you. And, and this is how you know that what I said earlier was true about your brother being of the children of Israel. You wanted to come down to Leviticus twenty five and forty four. Both thy bondmen and bondmaids, which thou shalt have, shall be of the heathen that are round and about you. The heathens that's round and about them is talking about the other nations. Now we're talking about other nations. Specifically, of them ye, uh, of them ye shall buy bondmen and bondmaids. Moreover, of the children of the strangers that do sojourn among you, of them shall ye buy, and of their families that are with thee, they shall begat in your land, and they shall be a possession." Do you see that we went from heathens round and about you and then to strangers, which now we have two different classifications? Do you see that? Yeah, yeah, for okay. sure. Now, now let's go to a third classification. And ye shall take them as an inheritance for your children after you to inherit them for a possession. They shall be your bond men forever, but over your brethren who you're the children of Israel. See, earlier when we talked and I said, who's your brother? You tried adding heathens in the chapters telling you who your brother is. Ye shall not rule over one another with rigor. So there is another nation that you rule over. And there is your brother who falls in decay with you that you do not treat the same. The entire chapter is giving you the difference between how you treat a heathen and how you treat your brother. And when it's your brother, it tells you. And when it's a heathen, it tells you. So why are you trying to tell me something different? Because if the law tells us also to love the stranger like yourself, that sounds like that's your brother, bro. Because this is this is what I'm trying to explain to you. The stranger is your brother when it says your brother, though he be a stranger. That's. That's the point and the purpose, because it's letting you know your brother can also be a stranger. Is Kit was couldn't David be your brother? Yeah. Did he call himself a stranger and an alien? But that was context, though, bro. He's that's, saying that that's what I'm trying to tell you. But that's why we that's why he used Nicardo, because he's estranged from the nation of Israel. He's saying he that he's not God. He didn't he's saying that. 
Thor. He didn't only you he didn't only use that word. He used two and, separate words. Yeah, Zer. Zer Zer also applies to one who is trying to come up come within the Levites. Correct. And now let me ask you something else, right? What, what when, when, the Lord, when the Lord said, hold up, when the Lord said inside of Leviticus, right? When we read earlier, ye talking about the nation of Israel are strangers and sojourners with me. What word was used? I believe it. I believe it's Gar. You believe Don't it's what? Don't quote me on that, bro. I don't have I don't have the blue letter in front of me. Just tell me, bro. It is Gar and Tasab. So meaning those words could also be used for Israel. God, the most high himself called us strangers, Gar, and sojourners with him as an entire nation. Again, why are you trying to make it different? Because you just quoted Abraham earlier. When it was talking about, we not even, we not, we not even talking about that right now. We're right here. Why are you first? See, and this is what I mean. You're flip flopping. One minute, Nakar only has to do with non-Israelites. When I show you David, he used Nakar. Then you said Gar is for non-Israelites. I show you the Most High used all of us. Now you want to run to Abraham, Ak? You don't know the Bible. Nah, because I can do the same thing that you say as well. On one hand, you can say it's context. I can do the same thing. So now, what we really are arguing about it is, is context, context, bro. It, it, it is context, Ak, and it's this is and this and this is the thing. You don't know the context. You flip flop, and and once again, in the chapter, first your brother was someone else. The chapter told you your brother was Israelites. First, Gar was something else. The Most High called us Gar. What scripture do so we use? All of this. So all. Of, so all. Of, so all of this. All of this. You never answered that question. Well, I, because we've been bouncing all over the place. And once again, see, you that's feel how we got to deal with the guard. Yeah, this is how hard it is, we bro. Don't, we it don't. Really is. This, is, this, is, this is what I'm trying. It's not hard. You're making it hard because you don't understand it. Because no, you, have a, on YouTube you, have a, you have a with stumbling the, block with your mind. No, you have an issue. Bro. You, and, and, this, and this is what I mean. Yo, this whole time, right? This whole time, you've had excellent decorum in our conversation. As soon as you get cut and I call you out on your bullshit, now you want to start talking over me. A minute ago, you said, nah, I want to do this right. Now that I showed you full of shit, you want to talk over me. Nah, that's not what I did, God. That's, that's exactly what you did. And now that's that's why you, nah, now you calm it down because, you know what I'm saying, because I'm telling you that's what's up. Because I want to hear the, the answer. I want to hear the response. You, you, you want you want to hear the response now because that's your comfort zone. Now that I brought you into the depths of the water and I'm drowning you, now you want to interrupt me and take me to where you feel safe at. But But what you should do before we even go there is say, you know what? I've been wrong on the definitions and context of these words. That's what you should say. You should say, I made some statements earlier and you proved them wrong. Well, first you have to prove that the, the stranger can't be circumcised or what word is being applied to the specific stranger that you I'll are. Do that. I'll do that when you admit that you were wrong about the context of the word. How can I be wrong until you prove that, bro? Because it's I literally, I literally, I literally proved it. So this, this is, this is what will happen. I'll prove that when you admit that you're wrong on the context, because you already had a position. Your position changed three times on the definition of three separate words for strangers. Every time I showed you where they were called, Israelites were called that. So do you admit that or not? I admit that this is a very touchy topic bro and yeah that is I, I got you all right well, we're over the time i'm not going back and forth with you over context doc you you real like this is what i'm trying to say like, if you can't if you can't if you can't be humble if you can't be humble enough to say i admit that i'm wrong on the context then you don't have enough integrity for me to finish the conversation with you